Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be finishing up our two-part review on the new Prime Cockpit from GT Omega Racing. This is the setup video where we install some Sim Racing hardware and give the Prime a test drive to see how it performs under real-world racing conditions. So, let's get to it. As you can see, I have a set of pedals mounted to the Prime Cockpit now, and these are kind of a boutique, expensive pedal set, high end, but they do have a nice stiff load cell in them, so I'm going to use that for testing here, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. Let's talk about the pedal sets that do fit this tray with those slots in there like that. The Thrustmaster family fits both the TP3A and the TLCM, I believe it's called, with that load cell pedal. The Logitech G29, which means the other Logitech should fit. Fanatec V3 pedals, the Club Sports, they fit. So the Elites, I imagine they'll fit too. All for Sim Mecha Cup 1s actually fit. Now those, I call those the boutique type pedals because they're kind of expensive, but they're very nice. And yeah, they fit actually in the slots, which I was a little surprised at because the rest of mine did not fit. The SRPs did not fit. I just did a review on those recently. The SimWorks, the awesome SimWorks, they did not fit. I would have to drill holes for those. And what you're looking at now is SimTrex. And we'll go around here and take a closer look at this. And I don't mind drilling a hole for a set of pedals because that's really, you want to get them solidly mounted. And they are mounted about as solidly as they can be when we're talking about, you know, this metal plate that we're using here. Remember, it's only three millimeters thick, but we'll see how it performs. I have two M8 bolts. I have some black ones, so I went ahead and used those, kind of match everything. And you can see it's a very awesome looking pedal set here that Simtrex has designed. Of course, we won't know how good they are until we're actually working with them. And I'm going to go underneath here and show you guys briefly the how we secured this with the nuts. Let's see if we can see them in there. It's kind of dark. I have one there. should have one down there you can see. And over here, we have the same thing. One up here closer, and then one further down. Nice and secure. Well, it's as secure as I can get it on a 3 millimeter plate. So how these are going to perform, I don't know. You can go up to 3, uh, what is it? No, 200 kilograms on the load cell for this brake pedal. So this is going to be a nice stiff brake pedal for me to really push hard on this plate. And of course, we'll have some video rolling when I'm doing this, doing some heel and toe, and see how this plate responds to that kind of pressure. So what we'll do next is probably get onto the seat because I want to go ahead and get my seat mounted. You see it's sitting over here because a lot of the reach for my wheelbase and for the shifter where I'm going to put that on is going to be determined by where the seat ends up. Now we're ready for the seat install. I'll be using this NRG seat from Prisma. This is a medium sized Prisma seat and the using the normal type of side mount seat rails here. These are Sparco aluminum ones. They're kind of thick, but these have been powder coated red and rebranded with JCL racing on the side back when I had a rig of his in here for review. I kept the seat brackets. <laughs> so yeah, you have to come over to the here and get your measurements right. If you want it to go smoothly, I mean, you could just go ahead and throw it on there and then wiggle things around after you have your seat sitting on top. But I try not to scratch things up and it just goes a little simpler and easier, smoother, if you will, if you do this. So I went over to my brackets over here in the holes. If you look at the holes are kind of elongated. They're not like a, just a circle, which is nice because that gives us a little bit of wiggle room, right? So I came over here and once I got my measurement of 360 millimeter centers on those slots, if you will, I went ahead and just measured everything out and got that to be 360 here. You can see 360 there on the center of these channels from center to center. And the distances in between here, between the side rails are the same too. So I got the seat centered as much as I could as far as measurements go. Now sometimes seat mounting points will be off a little bit and the seat will actually be a little crooked, but you can usually shim the bolts up and things like that to make it straighten up for you. But again, it's one of those things you just have to deal with it on an individual case as it comes. So now I need to know where my T-nuts need to be. So I have one up there as you can see, and I have one over here. And so I went back over my, where I'm going to be installing my bolts and measured there center to center. And that came out to, I believe it was 330. Let me put this up here. After I drop it, make a lot of noise. I think that was 330. Yeah. So now I have my T-nuts 
on 330 centers over here. And you can see it's on the end over there. And I did the same thing, obviously, on this side. So now I'm all set up. I should be able to take this seat and just set it directly on here. Once I get one bolt started, the other three should line up if I did my part. <laughs> so we're going to find that out. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, get my bolts in, and come back, and we'll see how that went. Now I have the NRG Prisma seat mounted securely to the mounting rails. And I'll show you what that looks like on the bottom here. And again, this is directly to the rail. There are no sliders involved here. I prefer not to use sliders because there's really no more solid of a mount for your seat than bolting it directly to the rails. I'm using some M8 bolts, some of my custom stuff that doesn't come with this kit. This is a hex, 12 millimeter hex wrench size with a flange in the bolt. And that allows me to come in with one of those ratchet wrenches and a couple of quick turns on each one of these bolts on the back and of course on the front. And I can slide this seat back and forth on these rails just like a slider. So it only takes me about 20, 30 seconds to make that change. I might do a video on how I do that with this special tape I use on the bottom of them too someday. Anyway, nice and secure, very stiff as far as the feel. Again, this is a very sturdy cockpit. We'll go ahead and I'll let you see a front shot of the bolts underneath there. And there they are over there. Very good. And I've already sat in the seat. You can see it's kind of pushed to the front. And I'll still have to bring my pedals to me. And now I'll know where I need to have the wheelbase. I might have to back the seat up a little bit once I get the motor on. But yeah, we'll see that once we get the wheelbase connected, which will be next. So our Podium DD1 is now mounted. And I was able to source some M6 bolts that were in the kit for this Prime cockpit. Now there's two links here. One is 16 on the left, and the one on the right is 20. And I went with the 20s, even though I didn't quite have enough of them, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to go and stick this through one of these holes down here and try to give you a representation of what I'm talking about. So you can see how far that's sticking up. That's the 16 mil. And after this goes in the wheelbase, it's probably going to be about four, maybe five millimeters of thread there. Probably a little less, I'm thinking, because of the way the inserts are recessed into the housing. But if we put this one in there, the 20, that's a lot more confidence-inspiring, I think. But we only had four of these, right? But we did have two 20-millimeter links left over from the build of this shifter mount assembly that you saw in the Part 1 video, the build, if you watched that anyway. And it uses these 20-millimeter long M6 bolts with nuts on the other end of them. And we had six of them. Now, the instructions only called for four bolts here and I was thinking about putting six of them in all of them in but once I had this mounted you see this 10 millimeter thick mounting plate here that actually allows us to interface this with the side of this 4080 on the shifter mount and we'll see more of that once we get our shifter mounted but yeah I couldn't see adding two more bolts because it was very very stiff I, I had no worries that it wouldn't hold anything so we had two of those left over and if we go Underneath, I can show you what we have here. You can see the back ones. They are the ones that are in the shifter mount. They have kind of a flange built into them and are button heads. And these up here are a little bit different, as we saw before. Kind of a flat-looking head on them. They do a good job. So now we have five M6 20-millimeter long bolts holding this 20-newton-meter capable wheel down, or wheel base, rather. So I'm, I'm confident in that. I have no second thoughts that this is going to be able to hold it or not. Of course, it would be better if we had a mount from GT Omega that had like a side mount like the Sim Lab and the, let's see who else, Advanced Sim Racing. Some other cockpit companies make that so it bolts directly to here. I'd rather see that. But we've got a wheel deck that's pretty good. I think it'll do the job. And of course, this design is very similar to what we see on other cockpits. And the reason it's here, I'm sure, is because it works. <laughs> and yeah, you want to use something that works when it comes to the direct drive force feedback department, I think. So we'll be able to see how it handles this 20 newton meters of torque once we're in and driving it. So now I'm ready to mount this shifter to the shifter mount part of this prime cockpit. I'm going to be using this ProSim Quay 
shifter. This is H pattern shifter built like a virtual tank. If you haven't seen my review on this, you can go check that out. You can really slam on this thing pretty hard, which puts stress on the cockpit, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. And we'll let us see how it responds to having some heavy force on it like that. This is the best shifter out there that I know of anyway, that can demonstrate what a cockpit can take as far as shifter mounts go. Now we're going to mount it to the top of the shifter mount. We're not going to use the mount that came with it. If you saw the build video, you saw that shifter mount. It's a piece that bolts up here and you can bolt like Thrustmasters, Logitechs, and you know, the Hoosing Vels, things like that to it. But this requires its own custom setup. And I already have that for my other cockpit over here. So it just transfers right over this because it's still 4080 on both sides or, or on both cockpits rather. Now, the way this is designed for this, you can raise this 4080 piece. You can see we got two brackets on the front, two corner brackets on the back. And then we have this mount down here. It's really a, a spacer mount. It's 10 millimeters thick so we can match the 10 millimeters of the bracket there for the wheelbase upright. So it spaces out evenly and everything lines up like it should. The only thing with this one is you can raise and lower it without having to worry about moving this bracket. Now on some other cockpits, this piece of 40 profile is mounted underneath and we'll have it sitting here with a corner bracket on either side of it. And this would also still be on it. So if you want to raise or lower it, you would have to raise and lower this on this profile. which is kind of a pain because you have to take it off because it has a blind bolt in the middle, holding it to that profile. But there's always, you know, different ways to do things and different consequences of doing things <laughs> the way you do them. And in this instance, we can lower it without having to move this bracket down here, but we leave this sticking up. Unless it's your cockpit, you're never going to do anything else with it as far as your shifter height, you think. You could just cut this off if you wanted to. And the reason you would do something like that is because this corner bracket is sitting up here in this 40 series, we can't move anything further back on this 48. It can't hang off anywhere. Like if you had a speaker or something like that. So yeah, it, again, it depends on what you want to do. No way is the right way. The right way is what works for you. We're going to be mounting some profiles, some 40 series profiles on the top here, crossing across here and across to here. And I'll show it to you when I'm done. That's going to hold this shifter quite nicely, I think. And this shifter bar, because of the way it's set up, does move pretty good as far as adjusting it up and down. In fact, I'm going to show you a shot here of me pushing it down and it's just loosening up the corner brackets on either side of that 4080. And yeah, just easing her down there and being careful not to scratch the profile if at all possible. So there we have it. That's the plan <laughs> to get this big monster of a shifter mounted over here. And then, yeah, we're going to do some H pattern shifting and slam around on it and see what kind of flex we get out of this. But I don't think we're going to get too much. Now I have the ProSim H pattern shifter mounted securely to the prime cockpit's shifter mount. And I do this with just a couple of add-ons. This is what's great about profile in general is that you can add on things so easily. This is just another short piece of some extra profile that I had, 40 series, a corner bracket that I get here in the North America from 8020 USA, and of course some bolts. And we have another corner bracket on the other side of that and the same setup for the front piece supporting the front mounting flange that we use on the front and the back for putting our bolts in. So this will hold it very securely. If I was going to be running this all the time and not taking off, I'd probably put another corner bracket onto here, attach it to this short piece of profile and to the shifter mount itself, because there is a little bit of left side, if you're looking straight to the front, of torque when you're pulling the shifter, because remember you're sitting in the seat over here and when your arm's coming out and grabbing it, you're coming from an angle. So you do put a little bit of sideways pressure on it when you're shifting. And you might see some of that flex a little bit when you're doing the shifting and when we're actually in the cockpit using it. So another corner bracket here and of course on the front piece would take care of that without any issues. And that's how I do it on my permanent mount over on my cockpit over there. But for testing purposes, this is fine. I'm shifting this now pretty, pretty hard, hammering on it. Yeah, it feels pretty good. And of course, I'm not even sitting in it. So once I'm sitting in it, obviously I'm going to add some weight to it. And I haven't finished cinching everything down yet. So before I start driving, obviously I'm going to do that. And that's one of the things about building a cockpit. Once you get all your stuff set up, and we are set up right now. We've got our wheels set up now. And I got my reach. I have the pedals set up where I want them. 
I was had to move them up a little bit. But yeah, everything is looking pretty good now. And we'll probably do a little final flyby after I go around and tighten all the brackets again with a wrench just to make sure everything's tight before we actually start driving this. So we're at Sebring and iRacing in the Lotus 79, one of my favorite cars for doing some heel and toe shifting. A proper test, I think, for a cockpit to see how it handles under some pressure. So first we'll talk about the shifter mount. And if you watch the shifter, you might see it shake a little bit here and there, but it really feels solid under hand here. About as solid as just about any other profile cockpit I've ever mounted this, this big shifter to. And I could reinforce it with a couple of the corner brackets underneath those short 40 series profiles I have the shifter actually mounted to. And I do that on my other cockpit that I drive all the time. So it does stiffen it up a little bit and give it a little more stability. But yeah, underhand here, yeah, no worries. This feels great. Nice and crispy. It just feels like you're using a real transmission, at least as close as I think you can get without putting a real transmission up there. So no complaints there. GT Omega has done a great job with the Prime as far as getting their shifter mount correct. Even though it's similar to other designs out on the market, really we're dealing with profile here. There's not a lot of different ways we can do this. Now over to the wheelbase. Now we're using the 40 by 120 uprights, which is a three channel profile. And it's the thicker solid pieces inside of it that we saw if you watched the build video. So this is all panning out exactly like I assumed it would. We have a 10 millimeter welded together wheel deck that is sandwiched between them and it's doing a great job here. I don't have any complaints at all. Once everything got nice and tightened down like it should be torqued to the right levels, yeah, it's handling this 20 newton meters on this Fanatec DD1 without any issues, I think. Um, I really don't have any complaints about that. Again, job well done here. Now we can move on to the area that I think needs improvement and that's the pedal tray itself. And you can see in this configuration, I have it sandwiched in between these 40 by 160 profiles, which gives it a lot more support than if we had it hanging out in the air with the angle adjustment brackets on there. And we saw the angle adjustment going up and down. Yeah, even less support if we had it setting up like this. So this is best case scenario. And I'm showing you some footage here. It's going to be a repeating of me doing some downshift on the four gear downshift that I do when I come into one of the corners. And if you look down where my right heel is and you look at that M8 bolt that has this base plate that is attached to these Simtrek pedals, which is a very solid base plate, by the way, and you can see it moving. And that's the best way I could figure to show you guys. Yeah, that's where it's bowing up the plate, right? And that gives me the movement. And of course, that adds some damping that you shouldn't get when you're running these pedals. You can see how much it's moving around there. Now, again, if I had this at an angle with those angle brackets set on top of these 40 by 160s, we'd be seeing a lot more movement than this. So even under the best case conditions here, yeah, this is this is something that needs an improvement. And I think that it wouldn't be hard for them to come up with a different solution that is stiffer, has height and angle adjustment because other companies are doing that. And again, it's just one of those things I want to point out here that, yeah, and it really sticks out even more because the rest of the cockpit is very stiff. So it's a very obvious difference here when you're sitting in a cockpit where all the other components are coming together so well and well, it's just very stiff everywhere. So I just wanted to show you guys this so you guys can get a good idea of what to expect if you bought one of these cockpits. Now, other than that, yeah, just having a blast doing some heel and toe here. I'm feeling everything that we can do now. It did move around a little bit on the feet and that's just for me doing some shifting and, and hard down break. I don't know how it moved, but it did, but that's because of these plastic feet. They're hard plastic, so they don't have much grip on my concrete. Now, a carpet would be different. It would have some grip and it probably wouldn't do that. But if it was rubber feet, like I said, in the build part, then yeah, it wouldn't be an issue either. The rubber would stay contacted to the concrete or a wood floor or something like that. So really, that's the only complaint I have about this system is really the pedal tray is where the biggest improvement needs to be done. If they want to bring the prime cockpit up to the level of some of the other premium profile type aluminum cockpits out there.
thoughts on the Prime Cockpit from GT Omega Racing. This is the first cockpit from GT Omega that is constructed mostly from aluminum profile. Once I had it built, it was time to mount some sim racing hardware to it and conduct the usual testing method I use at the SRG. The wheel deck holes mounted my Podium DD1 with no issues. I was able to use all five of the M6 bolts, which gave it a nice solid feel when using the DD1 at the full 20 newton meter of torque that it is capable of, also allowing the DD1 to deliver its peak level of force feedback details. I would like to see GT Omega develop some other wheelbase mounts for the prime cockpit, a side mount for the podiums and a front mount plate for the Midge, Colmorgan, and Simucube motors. The shifter mount performed as expected. It is a familiar design that is used successfully on other available aluminum profile cockpits. The heavy ProSim H pattern shifter I used felt the same as when I have it mounted to my P1X cockpit, so no complaints there. The seat mounting solution provided a nice flex-free place to mount my Sparco side bracket equipped Prisma seat. I could feel no flex when using a very stiff brake pedal. There are two areas here where I would like to see better solutions implemented. The main one is the pedal tray unit. It is made from 3mm steel plate with only one support under it. This causes the tray to flex under braking pressure. I was able to mitigate the flex a bit by mounting the plate directly between the two side 40 by 160 profiles, but it was still very noticeable. While they're at it, they should incorporate some type of adjustable height solution in the pedal tray. If they can get this done, they will have a cockpit that compares with some of the best available right now. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.